Hi everybody, hello and welcome. It's Ruth here at Artful Stampin'. For those of you who are watching live, can you please tell me straight away whether or not the um, sound is okay? I did a little bit of tweaking and I think I fixed it. So could you just let me know ASAP if it's working or not? Hello everybody who's watching on the replay. Always great to have your company. Uh, thank you if you watched yesterday's. Yesterday, yesterday's live was a little bit different than normal because I didn't, did not have anything prepared to stamp with you, but I thought I may as well come on and answer some questions. And there were some really helpful and interesting questions. So thank you if you were there on the live yesterday. And there's loads of stuff I need to put into action now. So I'm gonna go away and have a big think and, you know, stuff. Sound is perfect. Good, 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 awesome. All good. Right, I'm going to say a quick hello to everybody then. Hi, Anne, Jane, Kim, Barb, Jane, oh, Jane twice, sorry. Shaz, hello. Kim, Mindy, Carolee, hello, lovely to see you. Heather, Lisa, Margaret. Uh, the sound volume is high. That's because my phone is right here and I'm speaking very clearly. <laughs> Hi, Judy Bennett. Hi, Mary. Lovely to see you. Hi, Kay. Oh, can we say a very happy birthday to Kay? It's her birthday today. Um, we've got an hour, one hour and a minute left of Kay's birthday. So let's get all the happy birthday emojis in. Hi, Joanna. Lovely to see you. Oh, sorry <laughs> to do that so soon, but there we go. Lovely. All right, so I'm just going to get ahead and start stamping because it's a little late here in the UK. And um, I was just going to just, I was just going to stamp maybe one, one sheet wonder tonight with you. Oh, our very own case birthday. All right. So I wanted to make use of the Sparkling Snowflakes stamp set, um, as I haven't done so just yet. So I'm wondering whether to have that as almost like as a replacement flower. What do you think? What do you think? Um, and these stamps are very interesting. If you've not used these before, these are like double stamps because you can use the you can use use both sides of the stamps so let me just put my chair in hi Vicky hi Glenna I know it's a birthday in the house birthday girl it's birthday girl Kay <laughs> Um, I'll a bit of balmy blue. And I think I'm going to make sure I've got my mats because these are photopolymer. And so let me just show you what the options are with these. Oh no, hold on. What am I talking about? I thought I could stamp these. I guess I can if I want to. I think, okay, so that one is designed to go on top of that one. But I thought that these were the ones that you can also put on that way. Hmm, okay, no, forget that. Let's go with, yes, I haven't used these ones yet. Oh, still got that fresh fresh stamp smell all right um, my balmy blue is very juicy I'm just gonna do a bit of do a bit of scraping so if you freshly ink your pad and it's a bit too juicy then give a bit of a squish down 
that's better. It's particularly important if you are stamping very detailed stamps, you do not want it super inky. I need a break from my stressful day. So happy to watch you play. Oh, Ali. Oh, I'm glad that we can be here for you. All right, that was cute. I like that. All right. Um, Oh, bit of musty moonlight, I think. Just gonna lift that up a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's good, Kay. Well, I was getting something ready to send you. Yes, I noticed that you were watching that. Kim. All right, so this one is supposed to sit, I believe, in the middle of that. Or if I, oh no, I've got the wrong one. It's that one. <laughs> stop again, stop again. Well, at least I realise in time. Hello, Monica. Yo, there we go. Right, I'll bring you guys in a bit more for this one. This immediately gives me com some kind of like weird 70s vibe. Oh, I've got the wrong one. Oh, So Misty Moonlight and Balmy Blue are really good friends. I know we were talking briefly about colour yesterday because they're both blue. But not only are they both blue, they are both a, they're a similar blue. Just one is probably a bit lighter than the other. Um, and when I say a similar blue, it's, it's just that when you start mixing a tiny bit of yellow to a blue, you can end up with, you know, Coastal Cabana and um, Bermuda Bay and all that kind of territory. And if you add red to a blue, just a minute amount, you can end up with Starry Sky and those kind of blues. Thank you, Miss Vicky. Oh, thank you. Vicky's just highlighting my host code for the month. So if you've never shopped with me and wonder what that is, uh, if you shop with me and you're spending under £150, or the equivalent in euros, um, then please do use my host code because that enables me to gift you. Right, there we go. Back out again so you can see what I'm doing. This stamp is very detailed, very, very, very detailed. It's very nice. All right, so to me, those are kind of my, like my main focal points. And But I do want to get some more um, snowflakes in here. But I'm thinking what I'd like to do is maybe just stamp some sing singularly. Does that make sense? Um, Mm, I'm done. No, I'll do that in the. I think I'll do that in the balmy blue. What was that, Kim? I missed that. What are the best colours to start with in your kit? That's a good question, Anne. The best colours to start with in your kit is your favourite ones. 
all right so whatever your favorite colors are that you would like to make cards from those are the best things to add if you're starting out and then after that i would say get a dark neutral color like early espresso or pebbled path for your sentiments because you kind of want your sentiments to stand out or even mossy meadow if you really like green go for mossy meadow and then maybe a, a another brown or another neutral like another brown that's lighter like crumb cake because crumb cake is really great for putting um sort of ink around the edges of your page to make it look vintage if you like vintagey stuff crumb cake is a really good one and if you just want a lighter neutral, then something like smoky slate or basic grey would be good too. All right, so there we go. I've sprinkled some of those little snowflakes in there. And now I'm going to pop some of these little baby ones. Or what I could start doing is putting some foliage in here. Now, I know these aren't flowers. But I'm going to kind of treat them like flowers. So I'm going to put a little bit of foliage. This is a fantasy one sheet wonder, okay? It's not realistic, it's just fun. So here we've got blue. And so to keep the whole look of my sheets very sort of soothing to the eye i kind of want to stay in that palette of the blues and choose a color that's kind of quite nearby it so we're sort of at this point here in the color wheel and so i could go towards the blue greens and i could go towards the blue violets so blue greens are colours like Pretty Peacock, Shaded Spruce, Lost Lagoon, all those kind of colours. So, um, I want something quite, I don't want anything too dark just yet. So I'm going to go for something light-ish. Oh, actually, I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. I'm going to go for a different leaf. I'm going to go for this. Oh, my goodness, this is big. Actually, maybe that's a bit too big. You know what? I'm just going to brave it. Just going to do it. Just going to do it. Go for it. Sometimes you've got to do something unusual. Just to decide. Is it going to work? Yeah, what did you have for dinner? What did Chris make you for dinner? Kit K. It's going to need some snow wet, snowmen somewhere. <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. Hello, Sheila. Hello. Oh, now Sheila's here. So the other day, Sheila told us the sad news about a little girl who very recently has passed away in her congregation. And um, I did ask her whether or not it would be appropriate if anyone wanted to send cards um, to the family and Sheila has said yes that's she's checked and that would be fine so if anybody would like to send a card to the little girl's mum um, or the congregation in general at Sheila's church please email me privately at ruthtrice at gmail.com and let me know 
that that's what you would like to do and I will pass on the details to you um, if anyone would like to just be a blessing to that family um, and I don't know if there's any uh, you know there might be that there's some expenses involved as well so if anyone wants to gift as well um, I can put you in touch with Sheila to to pass that on you had ribeye steak sweet corn tomatoes mushrooms and sauteed potatoes <laughs> Ooh, that's a good birthday tea. Very good birthday tea. Hello, Tashana. All right, so that was Lost Lagoon gone on there. And I know that leaf is quite in your face, but that's okay. I'm going to temper it down with a little bit of this pretty little leaf here. This is going to go on in um, Lost Lagoon, as I said. So just tucking these in where I can. That's okay, Sheila. That's okay. Um, I guess we could PayPal you like gift it to you and then you could sort it out Okay, so this is just adding some pretty detailing. Oh, thanks for sharing the email. Thank you, Vicky. Yeah, just just email me. It just it just sort of you know a bit of security and all that for addresses and things. Thank you, Joanna. Yeah, it might end up with like this whole sheet being covered, but. <laughs> There we go. You have to start somewhere and figure it out. So, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, I love this stamp so much. It's so pretty. It's very pretty. Okay. Um, I have got this one that I haven't made use of lots, and of course this little holly sprig, which. You know, it's kind of in keeping for winter, isn't it? I could possibly go in with, in with this sort of bit of shaded spruce because this is all kind of keeping to the blues and the blue greens. Oh, what if I... <laughs> I open this one, I stamp onto that one. Okay, at least I figured it out before put it to the paper. Let me get my mats back. Ah, so bless her, Joanna, this will be her second time of doing the mixed media class with me. She obviously enjoyed it that much. I 
I've been teasing Joanna that she's going through a regal phase in her creating at the moment. The colours that she seems to be choosing for a lot of her cards and, and so forth are very regal at the moment. So if you're new to my channel and you're thinking, who is Ruth talking to? I'm talking to folks who are watching on the live video recording, as it were, live stream of this creation. And so there are various people who have got to know over the years and also during classes. And so, you know, if we sound like we're being quite familiar with each other, it's because we are. And uh, there are good hearty bunch of people, great sense of humour, great great love and kindness shown between folks. And um, yeah, please don't be afraid to just comment away, chat, if you if you can join the live, that's awesome. But also there's artful stamp in space. I'm loving the floral non-florals of this sheet. <laughs> yes, Holly is beautiful all year. It is. All right, I feel that it does need colouring in though. So I'm going to pull out Pool Party. Is this Pool Party? So again, Pool Party is on that blue-green side of the colour wheel. Um, and so it, it will go... Okay, now oh, time to switch my glasses. Love to see what this would like be. Blah, blah. Love to see what this would look like done in purples. Yes. Yeah. All right, I don't know if I've got time to colour all these in, but I. I'm just going to do a few just to show you that they do look fun coloured in. You see, because the holly is a see-through stamp or an outline stamp, as I would call it, um, it look, can look a bit odd just stamping it over some pre-existing patterning. So by colouring it in, it makes it look more solid. You can actually still see some of the pattern underneath, but um, it's not so obvious. There we go. You see a few how it looks. It gives them an icy look coloured in. Yes, it does. Yeah, I suppose it's like they're frosted leaves. It'd be nice to put a bit of Wink of Stella on them, maybe. All right, I'm not going to colour them all in, like I said, but I'll do just do those ones up here. And I'll do these ones here. All right, I'm just going to stop there because I don't want to take up too much time doing that. But yeah, that, that does look nice. All right. Um, oh, now I do have some berries. Brand new stamp. 
yeah definitely a bit of wink so I don't really want to go too far from the blue theme that I've got going on here so if I were to still be with the blue so we've got as I said we've got kind of like the misty moonlight and balmy blue sort of sitting in this area here um then we've got the blue greens that I've used pretty peacock lost lagoon and um pool party now if I wanted to go towards the reds but not actually use a red um, the direction I need to go in is more purples so I'm thinking of maybe choosing something like Orchid Oasis or even Blackberry Bliss um, so that we're not kind of veering into another colour. We're not going jumping from blue to red, but we're sort of sitting in between. So it's still a colour that has some blue in it. Um, so let's go for a little bit of Blackberry Bliss. Yeah, possibly a uh, blueberry bushel. Yeah, that would, if you didn't want to go down the purple route, that would be fine too. See, I wondered also about a little bit of Orchid Oasis. Do you think purple's too far then? You know what, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. Because I can always add a little bit of other purple in the foliage somewhere if it's too much. Mm -mm -mm. I just, I'm always using the little berries as a bit of dotage. Like in some of these spaces that I've got happening that need a bit of filler. That actually works really well. how would I turn the wheel have you got this actual one Oh, thanks, Mum, for that. We get to have vote. <laughs> purple dotage. Ah, well, it's purple berryage. So, um, if you were just to look at that section there on its own, forget forget the colours behind it, just read what it says, okay? So here it says, this is what, if you add red to something, if you add red to green, it makes that colour. If you add red to blue, it makes that colour. If you add red to blue violet it makes that color if you add red to violet it makes that color obviously if you add red to red it's just going to make red <laughs> if you add red to yellow you get orange all right so that's what that means so if you add yellow to something if you add yellow to blue you get green if you add yellow to red you get orange yep yeah? So you've got red, yellow and blue there. And what happens if you add those three to any other colour? 
Then here it says add white, adding white. So if you add white to yellow, you get a sort of lemon lolly colour. If you add yellow to blue green, you get a kind of pool party colour. Um, now it might be that this colour this colour wheel is a bit faded because that's that's turning out a little bit lilac-y. It's not really meant to. I, I think it's more balmy blue or something. But anyway, it just gives you an idea of what happens when you add white to something. If you add white to red, you get pink. All right. So then here, this this one is if you add black. So if you add black to yellow, you basically get what's the name of it? <laughs> the poo colour? <laughs> wild wheat. <laughs> so yellow and black kind of make a wild wheat. Probably, probably with a bit of green in it as well because actually when you start with wild wheat it does have a little bit of green so it's more like a green it's yellow with a bit of green and black all right so there we go that that explains then here you've just got values of, of um like 100 percent to grayscale and then the grayscale going up that way and then this explains about different colors so it is worth reading this that does explain some stuff so on this side, on the back side, you've got sort of the, all those colours, but going monochromatically. Okay. So you've got tints, tones and shades. Um, and it does explain what tints, tones and shades mean. And I always forget and I always have to go back and read it. So there we go. So I'm going to have to do some homework to explain it properly to you guys. All right, um, I want to get some of this fern in. Oh, see you, Heather. Okay, take care. Have a good rest. All right, so I just want a little bit of this Heather, not Heather, like this fern in here. Oh, that's nice. So I'm just inking up my stamp on the corner there. So I don't want this bottom bit inking up. Right. And I'm stamping, you see I'm stamping about three times. I'm moving my stamp around. I'm loving this texture. It's so feathery looking. It's really fun. Thanks, Barbara. Um, we have a third one coming up here somewhere. You know what? And I think there might be one that you would see just sneaking down there. <laughs> Now maybe, I don't know, here as well. Oh, Kim, um, there's a couple who come to my church. They're coming to Texas. 
for a wedding in November. All these people going to Texas and not me. <laughs> Hi, Sandy. Hi, Diane. Just knocking off the workies. Now it's time to reset my brain with Ruth. Ah. Oh. So is it five-ish with you or have you been working late today, Sandy? I thought you were only about five hours behind me. Oh, now, this stamp here, I'm not going to use it tonight, but where's Janice? I think this could be used as a potential dingle dangle. Yeah, I only noticed it the other day. What do you think? Janice and I have this ongoing search for the perfect dingle dangle. And every catalogue that comes out, we contact each other if we find one. <laughs> I hope Ruth, it's so kind of you to make this for me. <laughs> well, Sham. Well. Um, right, dotage. Yes, I do think some dotage would be good. Uh. I'm going to go for the colour and contour dotage because with the whole snowy theme this sort of reminds me if you know when snow starts to get a bit slushy and it splats around everywhere that's the vibe I'm getting from this, this dotage. Okay. Yes, it can be curved on the block. Yeah. See, look, I've converted you. Oh, it's 4.30 with you. Okay. Okay, I'll have to do a purpley one for you, won't I? More, more purple, more purple. Although, actually, I'm, I'm a bit reluctant to go with the dark purple with this one. I'm wanting to go for a bit of a fresh freesia. Because I'm too lazy to figure it out myself. What sets are we using? Perched in a tree has got some lovely dotage. It's not as splatty as this one. You see how this is, looks like it's, you know, been flicked. That's the vibe I get from this one. Yeah, so the stamp sets you're seeing are Christmas Classics, which is in the mini catalogue. Enchanted Butterfly, the leaf of it. Dainty Delight, Sparkling Snowflakes and Earthen Textures. But of course, I'm going to go over it at the end, aren't I? I better remember because the other day I, I stamped something and I forgot to tell you what stamps I used. So if I ever forget to tell you, please bug me in the comment section. I love being bugged in the comment section. Um, you know, ask ask genuine, helpful questions, and I will answer them. Um, yeah, so just just pop in the comment section and say, Ruth, what's the list? You know, you've forgotten to tell us, or you've forgotten the colours to tell us, um, and I'll happily update the description of the video. Hi, Sue Beasley. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Patricia. Sue from Australia. Wonderful. Good morning, Australia. And New Zealand. All right, I think I'm going to leave it there for now. I don't really want to add too much more, apart from maybe just to do a little bit of ink blending. I just feel like around this the, that central area just could do with something I'm 
very gently. Can you hear the rain coming down? <gasps> it is raining here. Although I, the temperature is preferable. I don't like it when it gets cold too quick. My body, it takes a while for my body to adjust. <laughs> Welcome to the chatterbox, Sue. <laughs> Speak to you for yourself, Mary Hulk. <laughs> Actually, Ma Ma Mary isn't the biggest chatterer around here. We have some other chatterers. It's wonderful. Hi, Elaine. I didn't see you come in. Hi, Dee Dee, as well. Excuse me a sec, my glasses need a clean. <sighs> oh, right. So, oh, they need a clean, and I somehow I've managed to make them messier than what they were. <sighs> you know, you think you grab a nice clean bit of jumper or sweater or whatever, and it's like, oh no, it wasn't that clean after all. Okay, right. Just last night, I was thinking about a one sheet wonder with snowflakes, and voila, Ruth must have heard my brain waves. Wow, yes, I must have done. I did have another idea this evening of what I was going to do. Uh, maybe I'll do that another night. But I realised I haven't been using a lot of the winter sets out of the mini and... I know some of you do like to get started on your Christmas cards. And although we've got the Christmas Stampathon going on Facebook, I'd like to do some additional inspira Christmas inspiration. Now, oh, a question. Rather than me sporadically, you know, maybe once a week leading up to December, doing a Christmas themed, well, I say Christmas, winter themed creation i noticed that some youtubers do a kind of countdown to christmas type thing where they'll do maybe 12 or so projects leading up to christmas not leading up to christmas sorry no because if you're leading up to christmas it's too late really but um what what would you prefer would you like me to do a series And if I'm really organised, especially with my Christmas themed one sheet wonders the other year, I created a whole long video with just music in the background that you could just watch, have it on in the background and it played Christmas music. I don't know if that was any good. Leaf at top right. Top right. Oh, that one. Yes, thank you, Barb. There's one there. And obviously, I like doing stamp one sheet wonders. They come quite easily to me. Are you just happy for me to do those with maybe how to make these up into simple cards with the odd, more complicated card? Oh, I did a collage card the other day for my in-person class that I've got to share with you guys which I haven't done yet, which can be adapted to all sorts of DSP or your own stamp one sheet wonders. So I'm really quite happy with it. Let's see if I've got it to show you. Oh. Mm, I've got to hand. But yeah, it's one of those sort of cards that you can make from lots of bits and pieces. And you just need to sort of follow a set of measurements and you end up with a really nice collage. 
style card sort of slightly patchworky looking I've decided to start colouring these little seed pods because I can I love your one sheet wonders when you make your details cards. I get so many ideas. Okay. Yes to all you said. <laughs> yes, one sheet wonders. Okay. All right. So maybe tomorrow night I'll come on and show you this the measurements for that collage card, and use this and cut this up to make. And maybe do a bit of a mix and match with some existing DSP because I really do like mixing our DSP with something that you know you stamped yourself. So yesterday I had some good questions regarding sort of beginning stamping, and I think Anne just asked one about colours, like if you're beginning you know to start in this craft um, and I I would love to give people who are right at the beginning stages of their stamping journey um, specific tips and help um, what form that takes I'd be interested to hear from you so if you are a beginner stamper or um, a beginner paper crafter let me know in the comments what information you would find most useful to get started with. You know, would you like as basic information as, you know, like how to open the ink pad, how to re ink the ink pad, how to cut cardstock? You know, what cardstock should I use? What glue should I use? You know, all that good stuff. So do let me know. Um, because I'm aware that sometimes I do very elaborate projects where I don't want people to feel, oh, well, I can't do that. Um, you know, it's all about learning and building up to it. So, oh, I quite like it with those seed pods coloured in now. Uh, right, have I, I haven't missed any holly, have I? No, I don't think so. So yes, we talked about yesterday that the whole thing about colour theory, um, that might help some folks. Now you see my personal view about whether if you're a beginner is that just because someone's a beginner doesn't mean that they shouldn't have access to the best information and be taught from the be taught the best process. Because I sometimes feel that things get dumbed down for beginners whereas I think my attitude is actually if I teach a beginner how to understand colour how to cut card properly how to stamp properly straight away that puts you in a better position and it doesn't mean that you perhaps don't do complicated things it just means it needs to be broken down for you so yeah that's my theory <laughs> So, like the for example, when I teach people to crochet for the first time, I'm quite strict about how they hold their hands because from what I've seen on YouTube, for example, there are people who crochet and in my opinion they're holding the yarn in the wrong way and they are not building they won't be able to build up any speed because of the way they're holding their yarn. And so I get really frustrated about these <laughs> watching people who are teaching people and I don't think they've taught them properly. And so it's the same with stamping. You know, I I think if you're taught from the beginning, you can build up speed and you can build up confidence. Terminology. That's a good one. Fussy cutting and cutting around a stamp. You would think I were. <laughs> oh, Lisa. <laughs> what is your boss wanting you again? The how-to of stamping excellence. I like that phrase. Stamping excellence. How to a stamping excellence. Ooh, I could do a beginner class. Right, hold on.
Yeah, I, I, I do not think excellence is a bad thing. You know, I think excellence is such a good thing to strive for right at the beginning of starting anything. Um, yeah. Right. Precisely, reason. I think it actually develops a love of the craft versus the frustration of teaching yourself. There we go. Yes. I mean, Sandy is a case in point. Bless, bless her. Sandy, Sandy's first stamping experience was on a Zoom class with me. And I'm so honoured that she chose me to teach her how to stamp. And she has been doing it for over a year now. She has grown in confidence, but she has just tackled it and gone for it. And there we go. It's been fab. <laughs> You're welcome. I'll be here all week. <laughs> How to fold cardstock properly. Okay, that's good. Yes. Absolutely. Set expectations high. That way the proper technique is put into place at the right time. Absolutely. I'm all about that. Yeah. Just because you're a beginner doesn't mean that you're, you, you deserve any less from someone who's been stamping for 20, 30 years. All right, so let's go over the stamp sets. We used Christmas classics, so I used that, heather, uh, I keep saying heathery one. It's fern, really, or pine tree, with the holly and the berries. And it would be really nice then to cut this up and then use some of these greetings uh, to make a card. And I like this one because it's very mix and match. So, for example, here in the UK, we tend to say Happy Christmas, not Merry Christmas. And so having the option of a happy is great. You know, it, no big issue for stamping up just to slip in a little happy there. And, and it makes it great. Obviously, in, in some parts of the world, you, you tend to say holidays as well. So you've got that Happy Holidays if you want it. Excuse me. Or Christmas holidays. Happy Christmas holidays. Uh, to you and yours, that's that's a nice catch-all one as well. Um, also, I'm just aware that if you've got happy on its own, if you've got a nice birthday stamp that says birthday from another stamp set and you want to pair it up and mix and match, you know, you've got, got that word there. So there we go. And some great sentiments on that one. Right, Enchanted Butterfly. All right, I'll let you into a little Ruth head moment. Uh, that went, you know, Ruth thought process that happened earlier. I was thinking initially of doing some floral stamping and then stamping a background after the fact. So sometimes I will stamp some background stuff, then stamp the flowers. And I thought, what would happen if I actually stamped the flowers, then wanted to stamp a background afterwards? Now, it's super easy when you've got masks and stencils because you can really control where you're putting ink. But what if you've only got a stamp set? So I was looking at these designs and thinking, OK, I could probably fit those in around a floral design. So I may come back to that again and just have another play. And actually looking at some of these designs, I, I could stamp the background first and do some little clusters of texture and then add the flowers afterwards. So this is such an interesting stamp set. I mean, I mainly bought it for the butterfly, not going to lie. Um, but there are some other really lovely elements to it that that have just been great for other one sheet wonders. Dainty Delight, such a winner, winner. It's so beautiful. It's beautifully designed. And yeah, I can't help but use this one and this one and this one quite often in my one sheet wonders. These, these are great because they just squeeze in and fit in places. But this is a great one if you just need that big coverage uh, straight away. Sparkling snowflakes. I love a good snowflake set and one that is decently detailed. I'm not into these sparse looking cartoon style snowflakes. I think snowflakes are too beautiful to 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 not have them depicted properly. So I love it when they come out with one like this. There is a lovely snowflake in. Uh, um, is it Season of Chic? or shit, blah, 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 something like that. Uh, that is lovely, but these are just stunning. And there you've got the, the thicker ones. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I missed, I mistook this stamp set for one that you could just sort of flip over and stamp, which you could do if you wanted to, if you wanted more of a block effect, not 
that um, you could just pop that onto your block the wrong way up and stamp a block of colour I mean that that would be interesting you could do that stamp the block then stamp that then stamp that hmm okay there's a thought oh I didn't use that one didn't use other textures because I use that ferny one instead but I did take the dotted from colour and contour which is a good old favourite of mine this one here so let's look at colours again I was trying to educate you about some the, the whole colour wheel um, which I think I might try and do a bit more often in my lives just mention where things are on the colour wheel so that you can get a start getting an overall picture I mean yes I am still intending on doing a colour theory live but uh, or class but I think it probably will just help everyone if I do keep doing keep mentioning things right and then pool party sits sort of here up here all right so we've got the blue on the color wheel then going more towards the red we've got purples and then a light purple is freshresia a light blue is balmy blue then we've got the blue green color which sits between um my colour wheel. Oh, I have my colour wheel here a second ago. Oh, it's on the floor. Let me just double check where this is. So there's blue. Sorry, there's blue. Blue green. Yeah. So blue green plus a bit of black is pretty much pretty peacock. All right. And then that mid green is Lost Lagoon. And I would say if you're going lighter, you do kind of end up at a pool party colour. All right. So these three sort of shades of colour are sort of, they sit here on the colour wheel like that. And this is what I would term as a cool colour. Someone asked about that the other day. You know, what are cool colours? What are warm colours? These are definitely cool because they have the blue in them. All right. there you have it thank you so much everybody for joining sandy's happy she just got the snowflake it's like when you're learning to play a sport you're taught how i.e hockey to stand hit the puck and how to skate yes absolutely yeah like if you're doing ballet you get taught yeah the correct way they don't kind of go right prance around and then we'll sort you out they start from the beginning and they go right you stand like this you do this and da 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 yeah absolutely yeah and don't get me wrong i'm not interested in saying to you right i stamp that there so therefore you have to stamp that there too i i tend to prefer to give guidance so like class one yes i am teaching you how to stamp three flowers in in a little bunch but it's up to you what flower it is it's up to you what color it is so it's still about being artistic and hence the name of my channel my blog artful stamping because i'm all about being artful so there we go right lovely to see you all i feel like i've witted on as usual i'm um, just swapping my glasses out so i can see what you're saying bella yes and yeah three more minutes of Kay's birthday day so have a fabulous birthday just a reminder regarding um sheila's friend whose daughter passed away suddenly this last week if you want to send a card um please email me ruthtrice at gmail.com for the appropriate address and the names and everything i will not give out the names in public here um but those of you who know sheila love sheila and want to support this dear lady um in her church please let me know just email me and I will forward you um, the appropriate details. Okay. Hi, Barbara. Oh, hi, Barbara. So, Barbara, lovely to see you on the live. So, uh, Barbara usually uh, catches me on the replay, but it's great to have you here. We've got loads of Barbaras now. We've got Barbara Sellers, Barbara Simonson, and we've got Barb Luecht. So, I think that's three. How many? Let me just do a quick check. How many Barbs have we got in the house? At bar 
Oh, Bar Blue X is gone, but um, yeah. So sometimes there's three of you. So there's definitely two of you today. <laughs> All right. Um, let's do the goodbye screen. There it is. Oh, lovely to be here. Barbara, please come again. We want to get to know you. I'm getting to know you through your comments, which is really lovely, but it's nice to have you on the live. You're welcome, Glenna. Right, lots of love, everybody, and lots of love, Kay. Take care. Bye.